be greeted, Church of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful name, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name, the name of Jesus. Gracious Father, I thank you for the power that you placed in the name of Jesus. Awesome God. What can I say to describe the beauty that is in this name? What can I say, my Father, to describe the power that you have invested on this name, in this name, at the mention of your name, Jesus? Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that you are Lord. Even those that refuse, they bow at the mention of your name. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. Let your will be done. I'm all yours. I remove myself and I ask you to take over by your spirit. Let your will be done, not my will. I do not own this church. The church belongs to Jesus. Even that which you have given me belongs to you. Have your way, my Father and my God. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to listen to the word of God under the topic that says the power of praise and worship. The power of praising and worshiping God. We shall take two readings from the book of Psalms. Psalms 96. Psalm 96, verse 9. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let's turn to Psalm 145 and read 1 and 2. Amahubo 145 I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Father, in the name of Jesus, once more I thank you for the reading of your word, the sword of the spirit. Speak to us, teach us the way to go on the path of faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The power of praising and worshiping God. As children of God, we have a duty to praise and worship our Father in heaven. Worship should form part of our daily lives. It should not be reserved for Sunday only. It should not be reserved for days when we come to the house of the Lord only. It must form part of our daily lives. The psalmist said, every day I praise you and extol your name forever and ever. That should show us that worship is an ongoing activity. Worship is a daily activity 
for children of God. It is an activity that has no end. We worship God for the splendor of His holiness. We should worship Him for who He is for his great deeds and for his wonderful acts of kindness amongst no, mankind. No Our worship to God is not supposed to be dictated by circumstances that we are facing at a particular time. We should not allow circumstances to dictate to us when to worship God and when not to worship Him. As children of God, every time of our being should worship God. We can worship God by the way we live. We can give praises to the name of the Lord through our own lives. We can worship God through our singing in prayer when kneeling down by lifting up our hands by bowing down all these are acts of worship there is power in worshiping God there is power in praising God when we worship God bondages become loose. Shackles that have kept us, us bound, they lose. They have no power. They flee. Mountains that have taken root in your life in, and my life, in they are easily uprooted as we worship God. But we do not worship God so that he can deliver us. That should not be the purpose of your worship to God. We worship God because of who he is. But there is power in worshiping God. There is power in praising God. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Offer your bodies as living sacrifices to God. Holy and pleasing to God. It goes on to say, that is our true and proper worship to God. We should not conform anymore to the patterns of this world. That is to say, we should live in such a way that our lives will bring praises to the name of God. The manner in which we conduct ourselves should worship God by itself. But this morning we are putting that aside. We are dwelling on worshiping God through singing, praying, acts like kneeling down, bowing down to him. We are not concentrating on worshiping God with the manner we live. We are dwelling on worshiping God through our singing when we pray unto him. I want to believe that every one of us by this time you might have noticed that in this house 
the first two hours of every Sunday, they are dedicated to praising and worshipping God. Somebody might ask himself, why such a long time? Are they trying to pass time? It is not so. Worship and praising God is important. That first two hours that we spend in worshiping and praising Him is important before Him. There is power in worshiping God. There is power in praising God. As I have already said, bondages are loosed. Chains are broken. Every troubling area in your life is fixed when we worship God. Difficult situation bow when we worship God. And it is written like that in the scriptures. We can see it in the scriptures. Let us go to Acts 16. 22-26 The crowd joined the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About, mid about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. As we have heard where we read, when we worship God, shackles break loose. They cannot stand our worship to God. No matter how much they have been securely fastened, they break loose. One thing that we are still struggling with as children of God is that sometimes we find it difficult to worship and praise God. Especially when we are going through difficult situations. We allow situations to dictate what we need to do. But scripture is showing us that we worship God in every form of circumstance. Where we read, Paul and Silas were in Philippi. Paul had just prayed and set free a girl who was bound by an evil spirit. The girl used to tell the future using the evil spirit. Now after he had set the girl free, the owner of the girl was not happy. We started reading when Paul was attacked by the crowd. Both Paul and Silas were attacked by the crowd. They were beaten severely and thrown in prison. And the jailer was commanded to secure them. He placed them in the inner cell. 
Even if they wanted to come out, it was not going to be possible. They were placed in the inner cell and they were fastened to the stocks. There was no way they could come out. The Bible says around midnight as Paul and Silas were singing hymns and praying there was a violent earthquake. The foundation of the prison was shaken. That foundation of the problematic area in your life will be shaken as you are worshipping. That foundation, whether it was laid by your forefathers as you worship your father, it will be shaken and you will come loose. As Paul and Silas were singing, they were not complaining. They were not saying, but Father, we have been thrown in prison because of your word. They were in pain. The people of the olden times, they knew how to beat a person. They would first strip you I mean, even if you beat me on top of my clothes, I can still feel pain. But they will strip your clothes off. Paul and Silas were in severe pain. But they worshipped. Worship God in that situation. No matter how difficult the situation is, worship God. As they were worshipping, an earthquake occurred. The prison doors flew open. All of them. The chains fell loose on everyone. Not only on Paul and Silas. Not this child of God. The prison door that opened is not only the one where Paul was. The Bible says every door flew open. Every chain became loose for everyone. Does it mean by my worship I can be set free even my family even those around me if that is so I will take worship seriously. I will worship God. He will deliver me. He will deliver my family. He will deliver everyone who's around me. Even those that mock me when I come to church, they will be set free. Even those that do not worship God, by your worship, by your praising God, God will honor your praise and worship and set your loved one free. The prisoners were not taking part in the worship. They were just sitting and watching and listening. But when the power of God fell from heaven, their chains came loose. The doors opened for everyone. Worship the Father. He will deliver you and your family. Take worship and praising God serious. Check your life, child of God. And that of your family. Satan has put invisible shackles around us. Paul and Silas were fastened with shackles 
that were visible. But the one which the evil one is using is a spiritual one. But it manifests in the physical. Everyone in the family cannot succeed beyond a certain level. He has vowed that no one in that family must ever pass this level. That vow will be broken by your worship. He has no authority over you. He has no authority over your family. That vow which he made will be broken. The evil one finds fulfillment when we suffer. He finds fulfillment in that. Just look at your own family. Out of a family of maybe five children, you are the only one who is saved. It must not be like that. Out of a family of ten, you are the only one who is saved. You are the only one who is working. You are the only one whose business is succeeding. You are the only one who succeeded academically. You are the only one who succeeded in every area of life. But still, he is making your life difficult. So that even those who did not succeed must not see anything good in coming to Christ. We must refuse him. We cannot stay like that. I don't think I will like it when I reach heaven one day and I find myself being the only one from the whole family. Where are the others? When we worship God, whatever he has put to blind their eyes, so that they must not see the power of the gospel, must be removed. It must be removed. Everyone must come to Christ. I encourage you this morning, in the midst of of the situation that you are going through. Worship God. In the midst of the situation that you are going through, praise God. The foundation of that difficult situation, it will begin to shake. It will begin to shake. And not very long, doors will be opened. And they will open for everyone. That hedge of boundary which the evil one has erected for you, myself, and our families, it will crumble down. Everyone will know Christ. Everyone will succeed. Except if a person chooses by himself to be lazy. Because they are lazy people. Without spirits behind. Check the book of Proverbs. But no matter how much you work, if you have been bound by spiritual shackles, you will not make it. They have to go first. And we also pray even for the lazy ones that the laziness must go. It's a spirit. As you are worshipping, the foundation will begin to shake. As you are continuing, 
you will be surprised. Doors that were locked, they are suddenly opened to the amazement of everyone. Everyone will wonder, what did they do? They were worshipping their father. They were praising their father. They put aside whatever they were facing and began to concentrate on worshipping and praising their father. But worship God for who he is. Don't get me wrong. Don't go and begin to worship God because you want a certain situation to live. We worship him for who he is. It is just that there is power in worshiping. After King Solomon had finished building the temple, he called together the leaders of Israel to assemble in Jerusalem. The Levitical priesthood they carried the Ark of the Covenant and placed it in the inner room where it was supposed to be placed. Let us hear what happened. Second Chronicles 7. Second Chronicles 5. I read verse 7. Then jump to 11 to 14. Verse 7. The priest then brought the ark of the Lord's covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. Verse 11. The priest then withdrew from the holy place all the priests who were there had consecrated themselves regardless of their divisions. All the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, Haman, Jethuthan, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals, harps, and lyres. They were accompanied by 120 priests sounding trumpets. The trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord, accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. The singers raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good, his love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. The Bible says the singers raised their voices and said he is good his love endures forever and ever the Levites who were musicians they stood on the east side of the temple and they were playing instruments they were accompanied by the priests 120 in number who were blowing trumpets the musician joined in unison and they sang praises unto the Most High God. They worshipped God. Verse 13 and 14 says, as they were worshipping, as they were singing praises to God, the temple was filled with a cloud. What is the cloud? It is the glory of the Most High God. As they were singing, as they were playing musical instruments, 
Ama instruments. The cloud came down. The glory of the Lord descended and filled the temple. The Bible does not tell us what they received. But the glory of the Lord brought something. How I wish that we could see that glory with our eyes like them. They saw with their physical eyes that the temple was filled with a cloud. How I would like that God can give that grace that we can see the cloud by our physical eyes. That would encourage us to put aside whatever we are facing and concentrate on worshiping and praising God. Praise the Lord. How I would like to say that. But the kingdom that we serve is a kingdom of faith. The glory fills the, the temple. Even when we do not see, the glory is there. Child of God, the glory is there. And when the glory of the Lord comes, He does not just come and live, He brings the desires of our hearts. One time, when I was encouraging the worshippers in their own meetings, I said to them, we should reach a point which when we worship God, healing must just flow. Deliverance must just flow. In that two hours, the first two hours, as we are worshiping and praising God, I said to them, let us try by all means to reach a point which when we are praising and worshiping God in that first two hours healing and deliverance and blessings will just flow and let it be so with each one of us. As you are worshiping God by yourself, reach that level when you will touch the heart of God. Whatever you need will just flow. Not only when you are in the house of God, wherever you are, when you are raising your voice, worshiping and praising God, let your worship, let your praise not only be from the mouth, let it be from your heart, let it go to heaven, let it break that dividing wall and reach heaven. Healing, deliverance, blessings, salvation that you need for your family. It must just flow and touch everyone. And it shall happen. Children of God will take worship and praising God serious. It is not entertainment. In the past, people used to give the instruments to the devil. They would say these are worldly things. Instruments are made to worship God. They are not for the evil one. We should worship God with every instrument. We should worship God with our voices. God must receive his due worship. When we spend quality time in praising and worshiping God, God receives the honor and the glory that is due to him. God receives that worship and praise which is due to him. We are not just passing time as some might think. 
Ah, that church, that white tent. They sing from 9 to 11. I will arrive at 5 2. When the pastor is just about to ascend the stage. As soon as she finishes, off I go. My job for the day is done. Worship the Lord. In his house, in your own home, everywhere. I said at the beginning. Worship must not be reserved for Sunday only. It must form part of our lives. King Jehoshaphat was once confronted with a difficult situation. A situation which was above him. Three nations combined forces to wage war against him. Ask yourself, why is your life so difficult? The evil one has combined forces. He has put them on top of you. It's a spiritual one. The limitation and blockage, the success blockage, the blockages that you receive when you, when you submit, those are combined forces. And they place them on one person. But we don't fear them. Our worship and praises to God will break them loose. Now, when Jehoshaphat was told that three nations are already on the way, he became alarmed because he was a small nation. Actually, it was not the entire nation of Israel. It was the tribe of Judah. How can one tribe stand against three nations? But because of their God, they were able to stand and defeat. Because of your God, because of the power of your God, even if the evil one can combine forces and place them on top of you, you overcome. Because of the power of your God, victory is ours. We should not fear. Jehoshaphat was alarmed. And that is what most of us do. We become alarmed. But thanks be to God. When Jehoshaphat was alarmed, he did not forget his God. He went back to his God. In this house, we have the grace of dream interpretation. When you dream something that is not good and it is interpreted to say the evil one is planning an attack on you, most of us will melt with fear and we forget the power that our God has. We even forget the power of Luke 10 19. We even forget about warfare prayer. Only to be told that it is a plan. It is not to say it is already on the way. You see, Jehoshaphat was alarmed because the three nations were already on the way. But yours and I. God will show us in a dream. The evil one is planning this and this against you. We begin to tremble in fear. We must not tremble. It is still a plan. It needs me and you to stand and make warfare prayer and it will be cancelled. Only when it has entered us, that is then that we need deliverance. 
worship and praise God in the splendor of his holiness. We defeat most of the things in praising and worshiping God. Did the three nations succeed in what they had planned? They did not. What did Jehoshaphat do? He called the nation. They prayed, they fasted. Just like what we are doing now. We are in fasting prayer. Praying for the nation. I am not talking about fasting. But I'm bringing it because Jehoshaphat and the nation prayed and fasted. And they sang before the Lord. That is the one that I'm bringing. They praised and worship God. Let us go to 2 Chronicles 20. Is Corinthians Billy chapter 20? Let's start from twenty one. Up to 24. Verse 21. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Let me repeat that one. You can stop there for now. After consulting with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army. How can you put people without weapons at the head of the army? How can we take our worshippers and put them at the front when we are going to war? There is power in that. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat took those who were praising and worshipping God and placed them at the head of the army at the forefront of the army. Let me continue. Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise the Lord, as they begin to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. They were what? They were defeated. The Just Lord. as the people were singing. They did not even fight. Just as they began to offer praises and worship to God. The Lord himself fought for Judah. The Lord himself will fight for you and I. As we begin to offer praises and worship to him. How did, how were they defeated? It is written there in 23. The Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir and destroyed and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of Seir, from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. I tell you, there will be chaos in the camp of darkness. It is not me, actually. It is the word. When you worship and praise God, there will be chaos. The other one will turn against the other one. And they will destroy and annihilate 
each other. Before you even reach there, the men from Judah, when they arrived, they looked. The ground was filled with dead bodies. Those spirits do not die at this present time, but they will live. They will live. And they shall not come back. We need to maintain. Worship God in his splendor. Praise God in his splendor. There is power in worshiping God. There is power in praising God. Let us stand. There is power in worshiping God. There is power in praising God. When we praise and worship God, bondages break loose. Shackles became, become loose. And the good thing is, it is not only the worshiper who will be free, even those around him they will be set free be encouraged child of God in that difficult situation praise and worship your father give all the adoration that is due to him give him all the honor praise him and worship him for the splendor of his holiness but as I said we should not worship God because we want this and this that will be a wrong motive worship him for who he is but there is power in worshiping God